Hi folks, I'm going to do a little video here on EMI. What is EMI? It's, a, it's electromagnetic interference. Basically, I mean, we've got uh, three different types of uh, EMI. We've got radiated, and that's usually handled with shielding, whether it's shielding of a cable or putting a Faraday shield around a sensitive area in a, like the front end of an oscilloscope, things like that. And there's coupled EMI. So what coupled means is that one device is somehow getting it at the other, either through a parasitic capacitance or parasitic inductance, going from one device to the next. And that's usually handled by layout, um, putting sensitive devices far away from devices that could possibly couple into it with EMI. And then there's conducted. So conducted is, is what comes in on a trace or through a power line or through some other means it actually conducts through a conductor uh, into your device. So that's what I'm mostly concerned with here. We live in a, a very rural area here. Our power lines are kind of unstable. We get a lot of power failures. And I've been, you know, thinking about designing my stuff uh, a little bit more resilient to the, the kind of nonsense we have on our power lines here. So I'm interested in conducted EMI filters, and uh, that's how conducted EMI is, is, is managed, is, is with filters. So here we have uh, a schematic of a typical dual-stage EMI filter. Let's see, I've got EML there. That's not right. So this here is a, a dual-stage EMI filter, as I said, and it's pretty typical in design. So you have um, a X-type capacitor here, common mode choke, and then a couple of uh, Y capacitors, which uh, shunt high-frequency components to right to ground. The X capacitors go across the power lines and uh, deal with differential mode interference. And the Y capacitors deal with common mode interference as does the common mode choke. And then we have a second stage over here with uh, another CX capacitor and another common mode choke. And this one uh, mega ohm resistor here is it's just to drain off the, the CX capacitors. Uh, it'll also drain all the capacitors, it'll drain the CY capacitors as well. Uh, just so that uh, if you take power off it and touch it with your hands or connect it to something that might be sensitive to having a 100 volts or so on it, um, it's that's not there after a short while. So typically conducted EMI interferences between 100 kilohertz and 30 megahertz. So this device here has got to be effective over that range and hopefully both in differential mode and in common mode. Now I bought such a device. I got some um, on eBay. Now I think they're built in China, but it looks like it came from a a French site. But no, it says it's in it's in Shenzhen, China. But it's all in French here. Anyway, this looks like a fairly nice device, and it follows that schematic exactly. It looked like it's well built. The common mode choke can handle quite a bit of current. These are rated for six amps. So I've got three of these in for testing. Now what I'm going to do today is I'm going to I'm going to do a Bode plot on them, and uh, let me show you that my setup for that, and uh, then we'll come back and look at the Bode plots for both the common mode and the differential mode. Okay, so here's the setup. I'm going to be using this uh, Siglent oscilloscope here, and I'm going to be using this Siglent AWG right here, and this down here is the filter. Now I've got the input coming in here. You can see that I've got this little bit of wire between the line and neutral and the ground is hooked up to ground and I've got the same coming off the other end. Line and neutral are connected together and I have the ground coming off the ground. So this is going to test common mode and to test uh, differential mode we're going to put the uh, function generator directly across the line and neutral. But first, let's uh, let's go back upstairs, and we'll do the run the Bode plot for the common mode. Okay, so here's a, a graph of the frequency response in in common mode. 
Um, we're starting off at, at 100 hertz. Yeah, anything below that is kind of like line frequency, so we're hoping it's not going to filter that out. So we're starting out at uh, 23.8 dB. I'm putting in uh, 5 volts peak to peak. And um, you can see it starts to roll off. It's about 3 dB down at 200 hertz or so, maybe 250 hertz. And then by the time we're up at 100 kilohertz, which is where it really needs to be effective, we're down uh, 55 dB, 56 dB. And then reaching a, a peak of about 100 dB down of attenuation, that's, that's pretty good. And then, of course, uh, at that point here, like it where it's at one, two, three, about three megahertz or so, you're starting to get um, the effects of parasitic inductances in the capacitors and parasitic capacitance in the inductors. So it's going to start behaving like a high pass filter. Um, but uh, we're still, you know, 40 dB down at 30 megahertz. So I think that's, um, that's pretty good. That's not bad for an EMI filter that only cost me $12 Canadian. So, okay, let, let me set up to run the plot in differential mode and we'll have a look at that. Okay, so you can see here now that we have the filter set up for differential mode, I'm feeding the uh, oscillator in across the two power lines, the uh, line in neutral, and we're not bothering with the ground and we're taking, of course, we're taking the output off the two power lines as well. We give a, a chance for that um, the photo plot to run and we'll go back up to the office and show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we are in differential mode. It looks like it's pretty flat uh, to about uh, 100 kilohertz and uh, well, let's say 150 kilohertz, 200 kilohertz and then it starts to really kick in. It gets down to uh, you know, between 70 and 60 dB of attenuation. It's not too bad. Um, it's, not as, it's not as nice as the uh, common mode, but that's a pretty interesting little rise there, eh? But something must be tuning. It could be in the the way I have it hooked up with those leads. Really should be using um, Z naught type leads for this. Once you get up into this range here, you could get uh, easily get um, you know, probing problems, but uh, yeah, I'm not I'm not too unhappy with that. I think these uh, these are going to serve me well. Seem like they're well built. And time will tell when I put them into equipment, and we see what happens. All right, let me go back over here for a second, and I'll I'll try to explain that the difference between common mode and differential mode. So in common mode, I'm I'm driving both the line and the neutral. So I have them actually just connected together. And uh, I'm, I'm driving between ground and both line and neutral. And then in differential mode, we don't look at the ground at all. We're looking at driving between neutral and line and picking up the same on the output. All right, folks, thanks for joining me. I hope we all learned a little bit about what uh, EMI filtering is all about and how effective a cheap filter you can get off of eBay can be. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye.